This meeting of Livingston City Commission is called to order. May I have roll call, please? Present. Mr. Freeman? Present. Mr. Meade? Present. 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 I'll have a moment of silence. All rise for a pleasure of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> First order of business tonight is um, public comment. Please be reminded public comment will be limited to things that we have jurisdiction or control over. And also that um, it's not further on in the agenda. Everything else further on in the agenda, you will have an opportunity for public comment. But at this time, limited to things that are not on the agenda. I'm looking for public comment. Any public comment? In some of these instances, what uh, what type of zoning is been considered for oh, some you, I'm Ready sorry. To come up. Yeah. Um, come to the podium and uh, state your name and address. And when you're done, sign in. Kenneth A. Prince, 72 North Main Street. Um, what type of zoning has been considered for some of these properties that are to be annexed in the city? Um, we'll get to that when, at, at, you know, when we get to the specific thing, Kenny. Okay. You know, like, uh, remember exactly where you're at, but you, you'll be able to comment on that and we'll be able to give you um, what the zoning is, whether it's grandfathered or whatever. Okay. And then some of these properties that will probably come in at a later time in this meeting, but some other questions I have is septic, that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. So that'll come that, that for that. And I'll address them. Yeah. Okay. I'll address them. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Any other public comment? So, you know, public comment, um, move on to consent items. I have a motion to approve, uh, motion to approve consent items or any that would be pulled for discussion. I'm also calling for a motion. Will we accept uh, consent items A through D? Second. Motion by maybe a second by Mr. Friedman. Roll call, please. Yes, four. 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 Motion carries. Um, scheduled comment. Scheduled public comment tonight. Um, we're canceling that. I'm moving to public hearing. I need to get what he's in. Like, 
Resolution A, uh, resolution number 4983, resolution to the city of Livingston, Montana, annexing certain land which is wholly surrounded by the city of Livingston is described as 26 Flushman Creek Road. Mr. Curtis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is the, uh, will be the public hearing and the second reading of this is passed this evening. This will be the final action on this item. Uh, this is the property that is located next to the armory down at the Creek Road. Um, you can see that little gray square uh, right there that's completely surrounded. It's only one property um, that will be being brought into the city. Thank you. Public hearing is now open on resolution 4983. Any public comment? <coughs> no public comment. Uh, commissioner comments on resolution 4983. Oh. Public hearing is now closed. Any comments? <clears throat> Can I get a motion on resolution 4983? Can I make a motion request resolution 4983? One second. We have a motion by Friedman and second by Nunes. Roll we'll call, please. Mr. Schwartz. Four. Mr. Friedman. Four. Mr. Meehan. Four. Mr. Meehan. Four. 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 That's not our. Agenda resolution number 4984. The resolution to the city of Livingston, Montana, of its intent to annex certain land which is wholly surrounded by the city of Livingston and is described as 72 North 8th and 72 North 9th Street. This public hearing is now open. Mr. Carries. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, this is the property at the end of 8th and 9th Street, most commonly referred to as Princess Trucking on the other side. Uh, so we scroll over there so you can see. It. So there you go. There's a little bit of gray in the middle of the green. Um, so that is the property in question that will be brought into the suit and zoned a later date. Thank you. This public hearing is now open. Any public comment on resolution 4984? <coughs> A couple of questions that need to be addressed on this. The Can you uh, state your name and address again? Kenneth A. Prince, 72 North Main Street. A couple of questions that uh, that we're posing in this is, um, has the property been tax assessed? Um, what is the easement onto the property for 72 North 8th and 72 North, North 9th Street? Uh, those properties, the city never really put an easement in there to uh, go onto the property. So we're questioning how that's going to take place. <clears throat> so as far as the easement goes, it doesn't change anything whether you're in the city or the county it works the same way. Um, if you want to set up an easement, we can certainly work with you and determine exactly what that easement is. It doesn't be uh, technically I think on the corner there there's some city property that needs to be crossed to get into your that's uh, correct. The properties there. So we would have to set up, we would work with you to set up that easement. For now it works the same as it always has. We aren't changing anything as far as that's concerned. Uh, what type of zoning has been considered for that property? Because there's two dwellings on it, and there's also a, a business. So, as far as the zoning goes, anything that's already there is grandfathered in, so it can continue in its use until that use is changed or not used for a year. Um, so, whatever is currently there can stay there. Uh, looking at the zoning map, uh, this has not gone to the zoning commission yet, and it won't until it. If and when it's annexed, and then they'll look at it. But in that area, we most likely, since all the remaining surrounding properties are free, we'll probably look at to be R3. That would okay. be the most likely. R3. Yeah, and then one other question um, the infrastructure is what about the water and sewer? Um, is there going to be environmental impact and things? Is the sewer going to attempt to be come out and hooked up to the city? So as far as the sewer goes, um, the commission could require a hookup, but I don't think that's their plan right now. We haven't discussed it. Uh, but as long as the current septics are in good shape, there'd be no problem continuing to use them uh, until they fail, at which point then you would be required to hook up to 
would that be the same with the two wells, water wells that are on there? So as far as the wells go, and, and now we're getting to water rights, and I'm not mm -hmm. stupid enough on that. But um, the only problem with, I don't, we can't dig new wells inside the city because we have a wellhead protection area that includes the city. But current functioning wells can continue to be used, or they can't be connected to the city water system. So if you did connect to city water, there would have to be a valve or a break uh, between the city water and the wells use, but if we continue to use wells, um, that's not a not an issue. There are many projects in the city that are currently on a well and have no city water. So there will be a later date when the property would be uh, assessed for tax purposes. Once it's brought into the city, then the <coughs> county treasurer basically does that assessment. Um, he, it's as far as the taxes go, it's pretty standard. The only question I think for future years is how we're going to do street assessments. And that'll probably be addressed this winter. And garbage would be the same way. Yeah, you'd have, you'd have to get garbage, but it would be one one garbage container would be the only requirement, which is for both dwellings. I, I I would have to see how if we're splitting them up. If there's two tw two addresses with two main, then it would be one garbage per. I think it's at sixteen dollars. Okay. Those are my questions. My time is one clarification to his questions. Uh, the surrounding area is R2, not R3, oh, so, so I would expect it to be R2. So it would stay R2. It would stay R2. Most likely. They have to go to the zoning commission, and it's up to them to make a recommendation to the commission who would then approve it. And then would we have any say in that prior to approval? Sure, you can attend both the zoning commission and the commission. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment on resolution 4984? <coughs> this hearing is now closed. Commissioners, any comments? No comments, but thanks for those great questions. I hate that in the hallway, but those are really good questions. Um, do I don't have any additional comments? Thanks. I agree. Any further comments? Do I have a motion on resolution 4984? I make a motion to pass resolution 4984. Second. I have a motion by Freeman, second by Navy. Roll call, please. Chair Short. Four. Mr. Freeman. Four. Mr. Navy. Four. Mr. Navy. Four. Next public hearing is resolution. Number 4985, a resolution of the city of Livingston, Montana, annexing cert certain land which is wholly surrounded by the city of Livingston and is the property of the Livingston School District on Scenic Trail and is described as Lot 1, in subdivision 183, in section 14, Township 2 South, Range 9 East, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this property is again, you can see it right there, the larger section. Uh, surrounded by the green. Uh, that is the Lewis School District property. Uh, it's currently in the county, just north of the soccer fields. Uh, we will be bringing that into the city. Uh, no significant changes for the school. Um, and I believe the school board is in here. Uh, Thank you. Any other public comment? Um, resolution 4985. You know, public comment on 4985. The hearing is not fully. Any questions? Comments? Can we entertain a motion for the resolution 4985? Move pass resolution 4985. Second. I have a motion by maybe. Second by news. Roll call, please. Chair Short. Four. Mr. Freeman. Four. Mr. Meady. Four. Mr. Nate. Four. Right. Next resolution, 4986. Resolution of the City of Livingston, Montana, and exit a certain land, which is wholly surrounded by the City of Livingston. And it's described as a property between Arbor Drive and Bennett Street, bounded by Miles Lane, Chestnut Lane, 
The city transfer station in the Yellowstone River in Section 7 and Township 2 South Range 10 East. Mr. Carries. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, like the other three, this is the second reading of this resolution. It will become effective as tonight. Uh, this area, as you can see, goes from Bennett Street down there in the bottom, uh, continues north along the right and uh, up to Harbor Drive, and then proceeds east to the river. Um, basically, wraps around the public works area there on the transfer station. Is, um, it's in it will bring the city up to uh, Arbor Drive, which is pretty much the midpoint of Green Acres and bring everything east of Green Acres and um, Brookstone down to Bennett Street into the city. Thank you, Mr. Carter. This area of the public hearing is now open on resolution 4986. Now I ask for public comment. You state your name and address. Um, good evening, Commission. Leslie Feigl, but <laughs> Larry Snary, Chamber of Commerce CEO, and I'm here tonight to talk with you. And um, it, this is a very serious matter. And the serious matter is that the people that are behind me, you're going to hear from them tonight. There are a few things. First of all, they received a letter that was annotated code used originally, annexation of contiguous land, 4301, 724301 originally. Tonight, you'll see that you have whereas section 724501 was utilized to do this resolution. So again, that was changed. This land that uh, we're speaking about tonight is not wholly surrounded. And this land um, utilized by 4501 saying that the Yellowstone River is part of the boundary. Well, after talking to the DNRC, um, that is incorrect. The Yellowstone River is owned by the state of Montana. That is public and the DeRosa's land goes all the way up to the public river line. So that's number one. Number two, these people out here have animals. They have livestock. And in the city of Livingston, you cannot have livestock. You cannot have fowl. I can't imagine, being that I'm going to be in the donut, somebody telling me that I have to remove my horses or after my last horse dies, I can't have any more horses on the land that I own. I want you to imagine that. We have sheep owners. We have <coughs> up from ducks to sheep to horses to cows. So think about that as well. Also, if you look under Montana Code Annotated, um, under Title 7 to uh, 4312, under this resolution, on the second, very first sentence, and I please, if you could, it is in the best interest of the city or town and the inhabitants of any contiguous platted tracts or parcels of land. I don't see how everybody in this area wrote you a petition stating this is not in their best interest. This is not what they desire. And you as the commission have a chance to stop this. Why is the Chamber of Commerce up here speaking to you? These folks right here are business owners. Some of the people that were in the five acres, the bis green acres, business owners, we are going to lose them. They sell their property and move elsewhere and lose businesses. And you can you need to think about that. When we start chasing people out of land that they want to have a particular lifestyle, they choose to be close enough to the city to get far enough away. It's beautiful out there. And if y'all haven't driven out there, please take the time before you make a decision tonight and delay to this vote. It's gorgeous. It's country living close enough to the city where you could retire, get to the hospital, or go to the grocery store. But you know, we can't afford to lose these folks. And, you know, we also don't want to make a bunch of residents extremely unhappy. That's not what Livingston is. Livingston is rural living at its finest, in whether you're in the town or outside of the city limits. And if, if you could just please take a moment to really think about that before passing motions or votes and put this over and talk with these folks. Talk with the folks that live out there or people in the county that really do not want to be a part of the city annexation. The higher fees, right? So, I mean, please, if you could just think about the words that I said to you tonight, um, and uh, just give these folks, uh, folks some due time here. You're going to hear from a lot of people. And thank you very much, Commissioner, for your time tonight. Thank you, Wilson. Yeah, we'll um, answer those two million questions just for clarity. So, uh, so just so everyone knows, um, there's 
no ordinance against livestock in the city. You can have any livestock in the city. Uh, there are currently horses in the city. Uh, I'm sure there's some goats in the city. Um, you do have to get a permit from the sanitarian. Basically, all that is is saying that you have enough square footage for the animals that you have. The similar requirement in the city. There's definitely chickens in the city. Um, you can't have more than five chickens in the city, and you can't have any roosters, but those are the only limitations on livestock in the city. So you can have horses in the city, not a problem, uh, as long as you have the space for it. You can have cattle in the city, you can have goats. It says in the ordinances, are you going to change the ordinances? No, the ordinances don't say that. That's not what the ordinances say. Um, they say you have to get a... Livestock. Yep, so That's what they are. <coughs> except for life and fair service, except for those things. Yeah. So you can still, as long as you get the permit from the sanitarium, you can still do it. And that's how we've done it. How much is that? I don't think they charge for that. I, mean, I don't know for sure that's a county function. <laughs> yeah. So, but we have not restricted that type of livestock in the city. So there are horses in the city. I'll according to talk to the. Uh, well, you talk to the room to the. Um, the coding letter. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so. So as far as the code in the letter goes, the letters are sent out as you notice. Uh, Leslie is absolutely correct. The, the 45 code or the 43 code that's in the letter is not the 45, 7245 that is uh, is in annexation resolutions or well, the code that we're relying on for that. Um, I'm super pleased that the notice worked and you're all here and we've had a lot of opportunity to uh, answer questions for people in the weeks since this started and even before. Um, this has uh, not come as a surprise to a lot of people. Um, I've had conversations over the past couple of years with um, folks in that area who knew that this was probably something that was going to happen as a result of Birchstone and Green Acres. Um, so as to um, the, the river, um, there is a, a code that's in both 7245 and 7243 that says even though such tracts or parcels of land may be separated from such senior town by a street or other roadway, irrigation ditch, drainage ditch, stream, river, or a strip of unplatted narrow, too, light, too narrow, or too small to be platted, uh, it still is deemed contiguous to such city of town. And that would be, in this case, 7245. But not 4401 or 4403 or 4301. I mean, there's three different codes starting from 1905 to 1957. So, I mean, are we just picking one contiguous code or wholly surrounded code? It's still the river is the river and it's owned by the state. So, thank you. Jolene Jurdy, 306 Grandview Boulevard. Um, thanks for hearing us tonight. And I'm the one that turned in the petition and um, helped in getting all those signatures and everything. Um, like Leslie said, the resolution states that they're using 724501, but the, the letters that we got are, you know, all of us property owners, states in there, the city will use the annexation of contiguous land. Well, under the contiguous land um, MCA, it says if the property, if it's less than 300 parcels, if the landowners do not want the annexation, then then it shouldn't be passed, and then it can't be something for another year. It would affect a lot of my neighbors, myself, um, like what happened with Green Acres. A lot of them couldn't afford to put in septics. They couldn't afford all the, the tax hikes and everything else. Some of them, it doubled and tripled. Um, I have some elderly neighbors that I take care of. I plow their road. And, and the other thing with the road, if you want to use the road as wholly surrounded, um, in that resolution, which I believe was 4961, um, where does it, what statutes supports being able to annex private road? Or is, you guys can annex private roads or? 
Uh, Hefferlin Avenue, Grandview Boulevard, Macaw, um, Brink, and All Spa were all private roads. Yeah, it's on private property. Yeah. They're not county. Um, Tammy and I went down and talked to Mike Inman, and he told us that they were private roads. And then, if you look on any of the like cadastrals or the ACGIS or something, it states on there that they're private roads. They are not maintained by county. They are not maintained by anybody except for the property owners. We have always maintained our roads. We pay for the gravel for them. We plow them. I'm one of the ones that plow our road. Um, they're not. They're not owned by the county. They're not owned by the city. They're owned by us residents. So where does it state that you can annex pri uh, private roads? So. When the county accepted the subdivision, the roads became county roads. When the county asked the city um, to... They haven't been county roads. <laughs> um, they've never been county roads. Speak out here for a minute. I, I understand your position, Bill, but this is... The, the county accepted those roads <laughs> into the system. I know you're maintaining them, and a lot of property owners do, even, though, even where they are. But they've county. never been county roads. When did they become county roads? When the county accepted the subdivision. Which was when? I would have to go back and look. They haven't been. They haven't been county roads for the last year. A year ago, they were in county. So within this last year, if the county accepted them, I would like to know when and how. And why weren't we? And yeah, why weren't we notified? Contacted. There are some things that you will get notified about because the law requires it to get notified, and there are other things that are simply going to be part of the public notice, whether it's in the city commission agenda or the county commission agenda. But when it comes to our private property, which included our roads, we should be notified of anything like that. Mm -hmm. They've never been county. We don't get, I mean, Nobody has ever taken care of any of our roads. They they maintain Garnier, but they've never maintained to the right or left of Garnier ever. I haven't looked to see if there's they're particularly uh, <laughs> set out as class five roads or or some other class. But certainly the county when the county asked us to annex those roads at our request. Um, the county believed that they were county roads, and so did we. I don't have any reason to believe that they're not. But they're the ones that told us they were private. So how could they believe that they were county? I I don't I understand that you're saying you got that information from Mr. Inman. I have not looked at the road book. I don't know if Mr. Inman looked at the road book, but he did when we were down there. He showed us. They may be a private road on a public. It's there is no public easement though. So we can double check on that, but that was that's not the issue for tonight. That was. But if that's point. what you're using the holy surrounded for, if you're then using it's the one way. Way. If, if, you're if using, that was wrong, then it's challenged. It is challengeable, yes. But first and that's why to, I'm asking. But first, we have to determine that was wrong, which isn't the issue tonight. Tonight's a different issue. We are. But you're trying to use holy surrounded. If we're using continuous. <laughs> Then that means we had 38 so property we are, we owners that we actually got a hold of. Can I speak, please? Thank you. Um, and actually, your time is up. actually, it's not because I haven't been talking this whole time. So, if you're using that holy surrounded, it is an issue because that is what you're trying. If you're going with contiguous land or contiguous MCA, then we have a right to fight that, and then you cannot try to annex us for another year. You absolutely have the right to fight. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Next on public comment, go you are, oh. oh. Thank you, Matthew. Um, so, having looked at the flat, uh, when the area was originally flatted, all of the roads were dedicated to the public. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're publicly maintained or currently publicly maintained because. Um, the subdivision didn't really develop in a way that it was planned. But those roads are shown as being dedicated to the public. Uh, it also doesn't mean the county roads, but they are roads that have been dedicated to the public on the subdivision plan that was approved by the county. <coughs> when was that? I don't know the date that that plan was approved, but it wasn't that recent. Did you find that out? 
Uh, I don't have the file in here anymore. Where would we go to find that? Uh, the county clerk and recorder's office will have all recorded plats uh, that have been approved in their in their system. And for those of you looking, four four dot three is where you can find a lot of stuff. Um, you can see right there, it says prohibited unless you receive a permit from the sanitarium. So that, that's where you can keep your lights up. And just real quick about uh, some of the elderly neighbors, and I understand that that's a real concern to some people. A lot. Um, and it people. is one of those things that we <coughs> visited with a number of people about in Green Acres after mm -hmm. that annexation. And a um, lot of them ended up selling a movie. <coughs> you absolutely did. But a lot of them also took advantage of the tax relief that's available through the state um, and, and stayed in their homes if they wanted to because the, the the, particularly for single folks on fixed income, a lot of them were able to get a great deal of tax relief, um, and they're paying less taxes now than they were prior to the annexation. But then they have all like the, the city water, the city sewer, um, which is like, it totals like $100 a month. Okay, we're going to have to pay the floor. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well, Amber, you were talking about um, 219 Garnier and Amber 16. Frontier Mobile Home Park. Um, how will my taxes change? Yeah. So do you do you own the trailer? Yes. So that tax I think will change neighbors of you all, because uh, that's considered a property tax that's specific to mobile homes. Um, so there won't be any significant increase on that. Do you own the land under the trailer? No, I do not. Then that would be there's really no change to your taxes. Okay. Um, secondly, um, water, sewer, garbage, how will that what affect us? So there's a requirement for garbage for all residents, so you would need a garbage can. Um, it's $16 a month. Uh, it's picked up twice a week. Okay. Um, so that's garbage. Water and sewer won't affect you for quite a while until, until and if you hook up to the system. Um, so there's been no decision on how that will work. We will put sewer mains in at that point. It will probably be an SIP or a special improvement district, but that is taxed on the property. And so if you don't own any of the property, you would be taxed on that specifically. Um, I just want to make a personal statement, that's okay with you. We do have a lot of seniors, um, a great deal of disabled, multi-generational, homes and one of my concerns is the lot rent goes up because the taxes go up on exactly. my landlord then there is an increase for me monthly because i'll have my taxes then i will also have to do garbage then when it comes to the point if the landowner doesn't sell and leave all of us homeless. Um, it's the monthly water and sewer bills. And just please take, take into consideration that it's this huge financial impact for every single mobile home in the park. And I don't know how a lot of people are going to manage that, or even if they can. And just please consider that. Come out and look at the areas if you have not. Um, it's really all I'm asking, just to consider that. Because it puts a lot of people who are already vulnerable in a different time, or a difficult time in the world with COVID, jobs, child care, everybody is struggling with that right now. And then the thought of us having to be homeless too, that the financial, mental, the emotional impact that it's gonna make on just that community alone is tremendous. So please take the time to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Two shorts. Two shorts. Yes. Um, 
Can I ask this question? Yes. Uh, well, the first thing is, sometimes it's a little hard to hear. I really want to hear what people have to say. It was hard for me to hear someone who said, Amber, I'm sorry, because there's some chatter. The acoustics in this room are really terrible. So if you don't mind just waiting until you're at the podium to speak, it would be a lot easier for the commissioners to hear everybody. I would really appreciate that. Um, the other Thank thing, you, because yeah, you're closer to that. I know, and so it's really, it's one ear, yeah, it's two different inputs. Um, the other thing I was hoping, because this is, a, I appreciate everything Amber said. It's not new to us. We've heard this, and we've been working, uh, the city has been working with previously annexed neighborhoods. Could we share some of the solutions that the city has been working towards to help recently annexed neighborhoods? overcome some of these challenges? It might be a good idea to answer some of the questions we you know, put some questions that I'm sure people in the audience have and may speed things up again. Uh, so now we've done it, and I'm asking the same questions over and over. Mr. Curtis, can you address that? Sure, so Greg is probably the best example because that's what we've been a part of so long in the process. Um, Obviously, Green Acre was already on city water, so they were a little different in that aspect. They were already paying city water. That's not new to them. They've been paying that since uh, 1959 or something. Um, they, again, are not paying sewer because they're not on sewer yet. Uh, a sewer project is a multi-year project. It would take, uh, we probably won't even start that for another year or two. Uh, so, but in the meantime, we have applied for multiple grants for Green Acres to help defray the cost of that sewer. Um, I think right now, one, two up, how many do we have? One out and one on the agenda for this evening. Yeah, so we have one that we've already asked for and one on the agenda for this evening to ask for additional money um, to, to defray some of that cost for the homeowners so they're not, they're not paying the entire cost um, of a, a sewer upgrade. And they aren't anyway because the city took some portions of uh, Green Acres Park and some other areas and the city is paying for those portions of this square footage of the area. So, uh, we did that up front as well. Uh, there might be something similar in this area, in the second part, uh, depending on the square footage of that. <coughs> we'll probably set that up to set. So that's how the city is attempting to defray some of the costs from the special improvement district. Um, the And then some of the advantages they're getting is uh, we are uh, doing some upgrades to Green Acres Park, which hopefully will help you as well uh, in the area. Uh, we're looking, when the sewer goes in, we'll put bathrooms in the Green Acres Park. I would have put the gazebo in it, uh, doing some of the maintenance, and uh, I think there's some new playground equipment that they're asking for with the Parks and Trails Committee currently. Uh, so those are just some of the tangible benefits that they'll see from joining the, uh, from joining the city, as well as the different controls from the uh, department that has added that area to their, their general controls. Um, the, I mean, the garbage is the garbage. There's really nothing there. It's sixteen dollars a month. Uh, you do get pickups. You don't have to haul anymore, which may or may not be beneficial to you, depending on who you are. Um, but certainly for some of the elderly neighbors, that may be helpful. Uh, they won't have to, to haul garbage or you won't have to haul it for. Um, I think those are probably the main items that we are working with Green Acres to approve right now, and we'll work some of the same same other items. I know some of the Green Acres residents were particularly happy with the fact that. Uh, people couldn't set up fireworks in the park anymore. Um, but we had a control of that. That was, we received a couple of calls on that, so that was nice. Can you uh, answer what the extent of the progress on the taxes were, like the, on the normal house, what the change was on that? So uh, uh, we can't entertain comments from the floor. Oh, um, I'm welcome sorry. to come up and speak at the podium um, and address it at that time. Done, Michael. Okay. The only other thing I was thinking is. City staff has been doing some different public outreach with the community during the transition too, yeah? Yeah, there have been many meetings between public works and the, and the residents to, to look at alignment of the sewer, timing of it, and some of those grants that we've talked about. Okay, well, thank you. Jay O'Dell, 102 Lama Lane. I'm pretty sure this is the same parcel you guys are talking about, but I've never heard you mention that. I am the neighboring property of my 400 new neighbors that was supposedly granted some grants for low income. And I'm worried like the rent there is like $1,700 are asking for. That's not low income. I have water line coming for, for the old green acres. 
through my property and everything. I didn't build on one side because the water line was there for the city. And if I broke into it, I wouldn't have, I couldn't afford it all because it's all asbestos line. And I'm zoned commercial. Will I still be zoned commercial when all this shit goes down? So I'd have to look at where your property is, but I don't think we're into anything on Lama Lane. Lama Lane? Yeah, no. so Lama Lane's not So there. I'm still a donor. You, you'll still be outside the city. Okay, I was told I would be in that Because I'm just south of the uh, south of the uh, south of the 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 but that's, you we're guys actually are gonna still supplying that. that, aren't you? Isn't it such water still coming through that? The long-term plan is actually to abandon that in place, yeah. at which point you so, can do anything with it because of the shutter. So, but it's not yet. It's not yet. That's so, probably with these improvements would be one of the things that would happen to have another water line. Okay. But those are future plans. That we have to some of that. Because I can't afford any more taxes than I already taxed. That's outrageous. Thank you, Jay. I have rental properties in the city and not in any of those. Could you put that mic down so we can hear back here? Is that better? Um, and I'm just worried that uh, what's it going to do to all of the properties that we have in the city of Livingston that you guys are you don't maintain a whole lot of stuff and you're adding more and more and more um what's it going to cost us as our taxes throughout Livingston go up along with that um do I sell all of our rental properties now and get out of the mess before we end up with the mess because we're already having to raise our rates due to the taxes, the extra fees for the water sewer garbage, um, especially since we can't separate the stuff on our duplex properties um, unless we have a whole new line put in. Um, when we could do this before, um, and so we can't have our renters pay those. So then we're stuck with that. So then I raise my rent and I end up being the ass because of all of this. So I just want to know how and when this is all going to affect us. I'll take that one, I guess. Um, sounds like you have some complex issues. I don't know. You, can, you have a duplex in the city and you don't have separate water lines. So each unit that doesn't, that's not code. And, or as I, I know and stuff like that. So probably something that was grandfathered in, but um, that's all I can trust for that situation. Uh, in general, you probably want to see any official change to your taxes based off annexation. They pay their own sewer and water rates if on the system, so they would cover that. If there's any significant improvements, such as this water or sewer system, that's an SID for that neighborhood. They cover most of the costs of that. Um, so there's really not a significant effect on taxes in the city, other than you're sharing the cost of road maintenance with more people. Um, so you might actually see a decrease in the street maintenance costs. Uh, but you don't already make, you don't maintain the streets that are already there, and then you're going to add more to the Yeah, no kidding. So it's a question. Uh, is it the but how are you going to take on more work with, you know, with what you don't already do with the taxes we pay? So the streets that will be annexed are already on the way to the other streets of city line. So there's not going to be a significant change in labor to get path down streets that are already there. I mean, it's... it's the maintenance is the maintenance. That's the way it works. I mean, unless we want more taxes, and then I can hire more people and maintain the road. Yeah. That's the other option. Well, I mean, that kind of pushes me in the direction that I kind of might not want rentals anymore. So there's 13. And those are in the city, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Any other public comment? My name is Jody Gaines, and I live in Fort Ken with Miles, directly across from the Brookstone um, low income housing. Um, so, kind of to Kissy's point, we're going to be adding all these other streets, and you just said, oh, they're going to add a park, and they're going to put the, or the restroom in a park, and more playground equipment, and blah, blah. Who's going to maintain that? Who's going to pay those people to maintain that? We, can't even, we don't even have people to maintain our streets well enough right now, other than the bus routes. So, where does that money come from, other than taxes? I mean, you're absolutely right. All all the money the city spends comes from taxes. That's your taxing organization. So how do we add more of bathrooms and park, um, and more maintenance for the city without having <coughs> people, without paying them, without raising taxes? Well, so. Certainly, we pay everybody enough. Well, exactly. But <laughs> whose money does that come from? Where does that come all from? The from? All, all the money spending. comes from taxes. Yeah. You can't grant money all of that off, right? Well, it depends what you get for grants, but yes, you can sometimes. Um, especially parks and trails, you can get parks grants. In fact, most of the trails that we've, we've built lately have been with grant money. So yes, you can. Um, as far as that goes, there is a parks and trails budget that's been the same as it's been for many years, and we look at that every year. That's where that money will come from. Uh, so the like last year, I think it was last year we put uh, new restrooms out at Myers River View Trail. We would use, proposed to use them. So we yeah, would use yeah. the same source of money to put in bathrooms anywhere else. Uh, when we do improvements, it comes from the same budget, same same tax rate. You know, I, I'm very lucky because we own a couple of lots and we don't have a lot of neighbors. That's why we live where we live. That's why we bought where we bought because it's county. And you know, look at a, a lot of the neighbors around me who are going to be displaced, especially the trailer park. You, know, you displace those people out of those that. And you have supposed low-income housing across the street. It's it's really sad. Like, I know I think, I think some of these ladies said, please take a hard look at that. What are you going to do to families and force people out of this community? People who have lived here, some of us, our whole lives, born and bred here, and you're going to force them out of this community. So just think long and hard about that before you make a decision, please. Thank you. I also might add that um, that trailer park in question, they have to boil with water in springtime a lot of times too. So we're looking at improving that and making quality life better out there. When was that? <laughs> they do it every spring. <laughs> I really want to know why you want to annex us because what you're proposing is actually <coughs> going to change the entire face of our neighborhood. All of us have two to three lots on Grandview, and most people on the sides and everything, two to three lots. I've heard that we will have to have two to three hookups for water and sewer because we have those lots, which means that we have to pay double or triple for the hookups. Then on top of it, you want to change the zoning at the end of the road, which we came together with the county to find that precise zoning. So we would not have two houses per lot because it changes the face of our neighborhood. All of a sudden, instead of our kids being able to ride bikes and walk their dogs up and down the roads, we have cars for, what, there's like 28 or so lots over there? That means that's 56 additional families and vehicles going up and down our roads. We maintain those roads. And you say, oh, yeah, we'll take care of them. We haven't seen anybody out there. I've lived there for over 20 years, and you want to change the face of our neighborhood. You want to change what we're doing and how we're living and why we moved there. <coughs> and you keep telling us 
oh, well, we're going to help improve it. Well, it's not an improvement, not in our eyes. And yes, we need more housing, I understand. I know people are struggling right now, but there are people who are going to lose their homes because they cannot afford to stay there, pay more taxes, pay additional hookups, have more maintenance, and then you want to widen Grand View to make it 60 feet wide. So we lose all of our parking and we start getting tickets because we're parking in front of our houses, which has happened in the city, in the town of Livingston. I have neighbors who have complained about this. You want to annex us. I want to know why. Is it for the taxes? We're not surrounded all the way. You say we're wholly surrounded. We're only surrounded on two sides. We have the Yellowstone River on one side, and to the north, there is no city of Livingston. It's open. And that could change in the future, but right now, none of us want you there because you are going to change our way of life, and that is not fair. Thank you, Paula. Since I can't congratulate my wife on the floor, I'm going to do it here. Congratulations. Nice talk. Thanks. What's your name and address? Malcolm Fowley, 211 Grandview Boulevard. Thank you. Um, I'm not as up on all the laws and all the ordinances, but I don't trust you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of us feel like if we give an inch, you're going to take a mile. And we're not Nazi Germany right now, buddy. And I don't, I don't want you to annex me. Let's, let's not trust. So if it. I don't have any rights, order. Then what's the hey, difference? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not trust anybody personally. You're addressing Wait. me personally in my house. It doesn't get more personal. You're out of order. Go well, of down. course. Go sit down. I want to be in my house where I can be. You're out of order. Sit down. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. At this time, I'm going to say um, I'm not going to tolerate any more of that. Um, you will be asked to leave. You'll be escorted up. Um, we're here in good faith, and we're here peacefully talking. Um, I know it's emotional for everybody, but we have to keep those in check, or we're not going to get anything done. It's going to be a long meeting. I want everybody to have the opportunity to talk. But at some point, I will have to amend it and limit um, comments to two minutes, perhaps. Um, I don't want to do that. I want to keep it going, but I want to keep it fluid, but I want to keep it respectful also. It will not be tolerated. So thank you. That's uh, all the comments. Hi, Jackie Feigl, 166 Miller Drive. I am not in the area that's being spoken for right now, but I want to stand with my county residents and let them know that I am backing them and I fully support what they're saying. And with all of this negative, I was wondering if you guys have any positives from people or a majority of people that would like this to happen. Um, because from everything that I've heard, these people do not wish to be in the city and in a different tax bracket and it's, it's just going to be completely about the money. Sorry, but that's what I feel like it's going to be. And all of you people who would like to retire and still live in their house and still live in the county, because let's face it, city taxes are way higher than the county. Um, if they plan to retire in two years and they get annexed and their taxes go up, they can't retire. They have to keep working. And... That's just really sad to me that people can't retire and live out their lives the way that they want to and the way that they bought their housing in this, the county and now they're going to be in the city where it's just going to be not a good idea. I feel like maybe we'll get more rooms filled up like this um, when more things come up, but do you really want all these people coming in and being upset about them being in the city now. So 
That's all I have to say about this county land that should stay county land. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. I want to go on the record saying that I have not seen, received one email or phone call regarding um, this resolution. I don't know if my other commissioners have or not, but um, as a person, as a city commissioner, I'm just letting you know that. And I can't take comment from the public place. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Unless you're with me. Can you can tell somebody else that has a question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jack Swanson. I live at 260 Junior Banks Road, which isn't right in this area. But I have a few questions for you guys. Number one, willy nilly, you go around and you annex county roads into city streets. Okay, fine. The county doesn't want to fix them. You guys haven't got any money to fix them. So you keep buying and getting more. So then you encircle a piece of property, and the next thing you know, that poor bugger's annexed. For what? More tax dollars. And I just wondered what your end game is. How far are you going to keep going and going and going? And did anybody out there where you're annexing now come to the city and say, hey, I want to be annexed into the city? How many of them did that? Now, I don't know if that's ludicrous questions, but as a taxpayer, you guys are wasting more money than you can bring in, so you got to keep trying to jack the taxes on somebody else. So what's your end game? That's the answer I want. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to partially answer that question. There, there is no official end game. I took it quite personally when uh, the question of trust comes up. Uh, I think it personally when a personal attacks come up. The end game is annexing areas that should have been, in some cases, annexed decades ago. So what's happening is the program is bring, being brought up to speed. There is no end game. I don't get a damn more dime if anybody gets annexed. There is more money that comes in, and it isn't wasted. The cost, the cost of the operations <coughs> in Livingston. Look at the cost of water in Livingston is way below the state average. So the, the fact that this is the area of how I feel is how things go. This is the era of that. It's not the rule of law. It's not the rule of what the, uh, what the state code is. If the state code says whatever, whatever it says, that's the way you go. And whatever it is, that should be followed. I don't have a bit of problem with that. It should be, it should be uh, discussed, and whatever is the reality of it uh, is the way things should be decided. Uh, a lot of field, I almost have to laugh. I pay, I have a house in the city, and there's two of us, and I pay roughly $70 a month for utilities, garbage, whatever, uh, you know, we're not talking hundreds of dollars here. So, you know, I, I'd like just to set a perspective of reality given to all of this as a perspective of following the code. I don't have a problem with that. That's the way it should work. We all do. Say again? We have a problem with that. Following the code? Well, you yeah, should. Comments, comments I'm the, sorry. The, I'm not going to. I should have answered that. I apologize. Thank you. But uh, when you're talking about anybody making any kind of end game or whatever, it's just to bring things up to speed in the city, which has been neglected for quite some time. Thank you. 
Uh, Patricia Gray about 204 East Calendar Street. I'd like to bring a point of order when it is public comment. It is just public comment, no, no response to public comment, just out of courtesy to the way the law is written. It's clarifying, thank you. Um, um, at, at first, I was also going to ask a question before I make a comment about this, which is. What is finally our stimulus money from the last round of stimulus money we received? That's not applicable at this time. But is that, this that, public comment? You should have public comment. That has, nothing, that has nothing to do with um, resolution okay. 4986. Right. Okay. There is 50% of this body right now, may or may not, well, certainly be in office in the next two months. And one of the characteristics of this particular commission has been a reputation of not listening to what people say. And I think it would be an opportunity for this commission and for the people leaving office to really listen to what people are saying and, and answering the question, why are they doing this? I have heard comments, for example, on why this is happening because the septic systems are close to the Yellowstone River and we don't want them polluting the Yellowstone River as a rationale, for example, for this. There really is no reason to annex this property in a representative democracy because the people here do not want it. And almost all annexations are supposed to be citizen-initiated. This is not a citizen-initiated annexation. So giving to the public this wonderful thing called representative democracy, listening to what people are saying and really taking it in and understanding and liking them for, for their positions is would just behoove this, um, in, in some ways, a leg duck. Uh, commission, it would be a legacy that you would leave the people of Livingston with, which is, in this particular case, the people didn't initiate it, they don't want it, and there is no reason to do it. So please consider listening to the, what the people are saying this time, this time before you leave office. It would be so appreciated by the people here. If they're not personally upset with you, Warren, or you, Clinton. They just want to be heard. They want, they want their homes, you to consider what's happening to their homes, to their neighborhoods, to their lives. And they're just asking that courteously, really. So please consider this as an opportunity this time this outgoing commission to actually really listen to what people are saying. Thanks so much. My name is Angela Cruzmark and I own property, uh, rental property in the um, Frontier Trailer Park. All I would like to say is that Mr. Maybe, I congratulate you on your $78 water bill. I just paid one for my mom on South High Street and it was $235 for one month. Mm -hmm. I don't want ex annexation. If I am forced to swallow it, I will sell my property and not no longer have rental property for low-income people. I try to keep my rent under $1,000 a month for my families. And if you include us in this annexation, I will be forced to sell and no longer be able to provide that to my people. So please take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Heidi Feldman, 407 Arbor Drive. I am not going to be in this current annexation at this time. However, um, I have some friends that is was going to regard to and considered me being so close also. 
So I decided to help out with getting a petition started um, with the great help of Joanne. And you know, I knocked on doors and you wouldn't believe how great of neighbors I am. I'm so thankful right now. But, and to know that so many of them are struggling with this choice of whether they're gonna stay or not. And honestly, it might end up being with for me too, because we thought we found our forever home and we end up being addicts also, which I know it's down the road, but it's probably coming. We might also end up with that too. Um, I did want to ask one more thing. I know everybody's asking this, but why why are you doing that? Is it just um, just absorption, just absorbing land, just plans? That's what we thought of. I mean, has it been in the plans for a while? Was this recent? I guess that's one of my main questions. First off. Go ahead and continue, and then. Well, and I know I want that, you to have your four minutes of speed. Um. You know, a while back, I know when you annexed the streets, I, we were on Zoom, and I had asked if, about annexing the streets, and I said, well, what about the land? And at that time, of course, they said, no, we're not annexing the land, don't worry about it. That was quoted at that time. And I just wanted to mention that also. That was during COVID, it was during Zoom. I don't have the date. Um, also, I did want to regard that email that um, Jolyn and I worked together. She said she emailed all of the commissioners on August 23rd at 1.17 p.m. So do you check your emails, because that was sent to you guys about that. Um, you know, on another neighbor that also had some orchard, she was talking about, she didn't know what she was gonna do if having to tie into water, she's gonna lose her orchard. Um, just please get to know some of these neighbors, they're awesome. And I want you to know that their lives are narratives. Okay, they, they really are, and what their future is. Thank you for your time. Thanks. I'm Edith Gilman, I own the Fred Jeff Shore Court. Uh, did I hear you right that you said that I throw my water for the turquoise? Did I hear you right on that? If I'm, if I'm thinking of the same place, Mr. Curtis, then perhaps I have this. I hear you. Know, that, that one we've had high water zone. So I. I do not boil my water. I have to have a monthly check on my water. And every so often I have to take about two dozen tests for different things. And my water has came back perfectly safe for at least three years. And the only reason some of this come back bad is because the, it got tested after the time period and I had to take another test or two and I am against the NFC because my charter court is a low income tax property for, and most everyone there is on social security <coughs> and anybody that knows how the hard it is to live on social security. So I'm against the NFC. Thank you. Thank you. Several meetings ago, I asked Courtney Llewellyn twice, two different meetings, to answer a question, and you guys have refused to answer the question. I said, what happens when you annex these streets? You're going to be forcing these people into, into the annexation. And you refused to set, set a time, well, you're not going to be doing it. That was just a couple months ago. You said, we won't be doing that right now. Now you're back here making these people go through the same thing, which you said just a few months ago, 
you would not be good. I'm saying, when is your word ever going to be good? Because it's not. When you tell people one thing, and a few months later you do something different. I tried to get my questions answered, and this news, news, you muted me. You refused to let me talk on the, the meeting. You okay. muted me. Not, not a trust her. You're pressing that the chair is the one that muted you, not Mr. Newt. So you did? No. No, Terrell Hoagland was the chair at the time. And I would have, I would have, um, Muted you too at that time for not following your protocol. Protocol was asking questions, and saying what's going on. I'm the man you were at that time, but that's that. Well, that, that, that's my, in my the past. Is, Let's, my that that was is, in the past. Let's go forward. My point is, when is your word going to ever be good enough to people here? When you tell them one time you're not going to be doing it, you say we're going to annex these streets in. I went and asked the city manager. I said, you guys don't maintain the streets you have now. I said, you look at all the new streets you put in or the streets you have in, you have manholes that never have a street height. I said, you never take care of them. You don't give them the right height. You put brand new streets in down Main Street or, or B Street, and you can't even get the manholes to the correct height of the street. And I said, you don't ever take care of them. I said, you could get, you know, take care of spend money on that. And you want to spend money on something that would suit people all over town. And his response was, I don't know where any of them are at. I said, have you ever driven Geyser Street or any of the streets, different ones back and forth? There's streets all over. And I said, the manholes don't even match the street. You go over lay the streets, you do different things, you never take care of things. How are you going to maintain these new streets for these people that you want to put in now? You say you don't have the money, so you raise taxes. When you go to raise the taxes, it affects everybody. And I presented a petition, which is not on the agenda right now, for 65 people of owners for the new planning that's going on, and said, we do not want to be in the city also. So I think by state law, it says you have to, if it's under 300 people, you have to go and the petition cannot be annexed by the city. You cannot do it by state law. And you break in state law by doing that. Thank you, Myron. Jocelyn Powell, 206 Grand View Boulevard. Uh, my husband and I are longtime residents of Livingston. Uh, we've had this opportunity to buy this property from the owner that no longer lives here. And we're basically doing each other a favor uh, for him to move on with his new endeavors in his life and for us to build our family. We have a two and a seven year old and we want them to grow up in Livingston. The more bills that get tacked on monthly for us, the least likely we can stay here. We struggle as it is with my husband working at the mine and trying to do profitable mechanic work on the side. And if we get annexed, we'll be taking a daily for all the vehicles that we have in our front yard because some of them do not run. Um, and that's just additional money that we don't have. Um, and that we don't want the fear of having to find another home yet again. We had to move three times within one year due to us being pushed out for a homeowner selling here in the city. Um, both our families have been here for generations, from Gardner to Livingston, and we'd like to just continue to build our family here. Thanks. Thank you. Patty <coughs> Smith, 115 All Spa. I was wondering, can you kind of ballpark figure how much our property taxes would go up? Mr. Curtis, um, so city taxes will vary greatly depending on how much property you have, um, larger properties, and that mainly is a function of the street maintenance district, which is which is taxed by the square foot. So if you leave out the square, if you leave out the street maintenance district, um, city taxes I think are slightly less than county taxes, or really close. The difference is the county doesn't stop charging taxes when you're in the city, so you'd be paying both city and county taxes. But they're they're usually pretty similar. They're within a couple hundred dollars of each other. Um, for the average, for the average city resident, the city taxes make up about forty-two percent of their total tax bill, and the rest of it is is county and school. But then on top of all that, then you have the SIDs. If there was a sewer, once the sewer system was put in, then there would be SID. I remember, you know, before 
when you annex, first looking at annexing and bringing groups, you know, you got together with that area to discuss everything, kind of had talks with them. Um, why wasn't that done for Montague Edition, the area that you're looking at annexing? I think Green Acres was really the first annexation that we did. Um, we are still continuing to have meetings with them, and really the most productive meetings have been post annexation. And so we realized that that's probably the time to have the meetings. Uh, because it's post rather than pre. Yeah, because pre, you don't it should actually get to talk about the issues. We'll talk about issues that we're talking about today, whether, whether it's legal under the state law, whether the river constitutes a boundary. And we didn't really have very productive conversations prior to annexation. The post annexation we have, um, and so that's kind of why we changed what we're going to do. I live in the Montague Homeowners Association Block 7, and we're pretty much self sufficient. We have one well for the big homes, and we all have our own septics. There's no room for us to grow in our block. Um, so, you know, and the neighbor next to me just put in a brand new septic system built a brand new house that he hasn't even got to utilize yet um you know so i guess i would like to see more information um, i know you had the talks with green makers and even before you annexed it in you know you presented them with how much their property taxes would be going up as a single homeowner that works for the county I'm on a pretty tight budget. I would hate to think that I would have to retire just to be able to qualify for lower taxes from from the Department of Revenue. But it's, that is what I would be forced to do. Either that or I would have to actually sell my home. And so I am opposed to this at this time. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So, um, a couple of the, the water sewer issues, just so we're all on the same page. When we do a project like this, you're not actually required, unless the commission makes a different decision later, um, you're not required to hook up to the water and sewer. So, when we're talking the different uh, parcels, we're talking stuff. So, we're just running things from the main to the edge of the edge of the property. Um, you're not required to, to hook up to that immediately. So if you have a good well and you have a good septic, you can maintain those for as long as they are working properly. Once they fail, then then you would be required to hook up to sewer at that point. Um, but isn't it always cheaper for you to hook up as you go by? Don't you pay less of a fee than you wait? No, because that's what the that's what the stubs will be. So the stubs will run all the way to the edge of your property, and then once they're there. You just have a sewer or have a plumber do that work whenever you're ready. Um, so you won't necessarily get a bill immediately. So someone was talking about orchards earlier. I assume they have a well. They can still use irrigation wells inside the city are perfectly fine. Um, if you're using that for your house water, you can continue to use it for your house water until the well fails, um, in which case you can hook up to the city. And at that point, it's going to be cheaper to hook up. Anyway. Well, no, we don't have the DEQ. I, I doubt. Anyone, if you have two or three lots, you can probably put it up the DEQ with conforming um, septic tank in. But if you don't, um, I think those are running 20,000 plus right now um, to put a non conforming uh, septic tank in. So that would be so it's not that you will have a, a sewer and water bill immediately once you're annexed or once the project's done, it only be once you hook up. And so if you have, if you're someone that's built a brand new septic, that can be used for probably a good amount of time before you have to. Have to hook up to the city. Some of the issues with Green Acres also was the um, density there as well. If the septic system fails and a lot of these properties, DEQ is not going to it's not going to um, pass muster with DEQ, and uh, they basically have worthless property. So, um, just want to bring that point. Thank you. Bob Short, five one nine Garnier. So I'm the guy with the new septic. Um, so if that septic lasts 20, 30 years, I won't be required to tap into it. So there is a there is a city code that the commission could vote to force you to. 
I don't think that's on the agenda right now. But no, in the last 20 or 30 years, there are a lot of stuff on the ground. Uh, we're not forcing green acres to look up the sewer. We're not forcing yeah. green acres to look up the water. They, they were already looked up the water. So, so the SIDs will bring the sewer down the street, the alleys? They'll bring the sewer mains, and the design will be determined later exactly where we put the mains. But it would bring the mains to the property and then stub the mains from from the middle of the road, wherever that happens to be, to the property. <coughs> love the street. Not the alley. It, well, it might be the alley. It would just depend on where the engineers say the disease for the first place. In general, and this is just general and it's different in every neighborhood, but in general, we try to put sewer in the alley and water in the street. Because I assume most alleys, <clears throat> most of the septics in my subdivision are towards the alley? Yes, and that would, so if that's the case, and that's what the engineers will look at, Green Acres is much more difficult because they don't have any alleys. So we have to figure out how to get that sewer to that main and where the main could be most appropriately located. But if the main's going in the alley, then yes, they would, they would put the main in the sewer main in the alley, stub it to the property line, and then when it was time to hook up, then they just, you just need a plumber to go from the alley. So if I have to tie in your septic and water to it, what would it cost? Uh, the tying in part? The, the um, impact fee tying in your guts. Um, we haven't discussed the impact fees yet, and one of the things we're looking at is where the impact fees for this area. Um, it depends. It, those are, that'll depend a lot of, on the conditions when it goes in, but some of the impact fees will probably be covered. Well, I sat with this man one day and got an answer from the department of the asset for this It was like 3500 for one, 4500 for another, so that's good grand. Those are the standard fees, but we're not actually going to charge this thing. Okay, so we also be required to put sidewalks around our properties, being in the city? Um, it's not a requirement. Uh, there are a lot of neighborhoods in the city that don't have sidewalks, uh, but it could be a requirement of the commission's own charge. So lots of expense. Sidewalks. Yeah. You probably aren't going to put a sidewalk in independent of an entire review road, but it just depends on how you put an excavator, plumber. I'm a plumber. I'm not cheap. I'm sure it's not. We're talking a lot of money. Thank you, Bob. <coughs> My name is John Scott White. I've lived here 62 years. I own property in the city and properties in the county. I have property at 308 Garnier. I purchased it because it was in the county. And I can appreciate change. Uh, I know it happens whether you like it or not. But as a taxpayer, it's my understanding you folks are elected to represent the people and the will of the people. I did not reach out to anyone here because I signed a petition that has been filed with the court. And I did send a personal letter to the court that reflected my dislike and and uh, lack of desire for you folks to annex my property into the city. I looked through everything that you sent me. I sought legal counsel. I reached out for opinions that were not city related. I asked them, what is the benefit through this action for me, the taxpayer, that owns multiple properties? They all said, absolutely no benefit, zero. So I stand here wondering, why would you pass something when I know that more than half of the people impacted by this are against it? I was unable to speak with everybody. You've been petitioned. You've received letters. You're supposed to represent the will of the people your taxpayers, me, us. Why don't you do it? Why are we the victims of something that gives us no fiscal benefit? I'm completely satisfied with the county, thrilled that my property is in the county, and have had a very positive relationship with the county with regards to this particular property that I own there. I do own rental properties in the city. I've witnessed my water sewer trash bill go from 
20, 30 dollars a month to now 100, 25, 130. Provided we don't generate too much trash, which I'm always on my tenants because I too try and keep my rents low. I respect that people work hard for their money. And not everyone is as blessed and privileged as we are <coughs> fiscally. And I like helping others. And I hope you guys will do the same. If this passes, you're making a great mistake. I hope you will listen to me. And I hope you will listen to everybody who's spoken here. And I hope you'll read the petition. Thank you. children were born in her house. I chose to live in the county, not the city. Will one of you buy my property from me so that I can move further away and afford to live? My husband had an accident at work over a year and a half ago. He hasn't worked. And it is very hard to make it. And I just want to say, I talked to Mr. Cardos after one of the Green Acres meeting, and I said, well, you wouldn't want to annex us. I mean, we don't have city water or sewer. And he said, how much property do you have? And I said, well, some have two county lots, some have three. He said, um, you could subdivide that, right? And I said, no. He goes, I know you don't want to, but you could if you had to. And I said, no, our houses are right in the middle of it. How could we ever subdivide? And besides, they were plotted for the size that they are. They are not three individual lots, they are one. And he said, no, we wouldn't want you. That would be as weird as annexing the five acre tracks. How would you ever know how many sewer drops you put for all of your property sizes being different? And I now hear that you guys are traveling out that way. Um, I, we never, none of us ever wanted this. I can guarantee you, that if one person even called and said, will you please annex us into the city? I'd like to know who they are. Because we've spoke to pretty much everyone in our neighborhood and not one person ever said they wanted this. And I have a map from today that I printed off and it says Arbor Drive is in the county. It's not the city. And that means we're not fully surrounded so it should go to a vote. And 51% against would mean it doesn't pass. So, as a citizen of our community and everybody else, I think it should go to a vote to the citizen. And I appreciate it. I'm sorry for being emotional, but the fact is that people pick where they live for a reason. I didn't just stumble over and go, oh my goodness, I should just take this one. I stood out in the middle of an empty field <coughs> and picked where I wanted my house. I don't want to be in the city. I want my grandkids, I want this lady's kids, that lady's kids, out riding their bikes up and down the street. 
I don't want to have city streets. I don't want to have city water. I can't stand city water, as a matter of fact. I don't want any of it. And I think that you should really take time to listen to all of us. Because we aren't coming into your home and taking it away from you. Thank you. And for, uh, um, pick up. Ten minute recess. Um, that's generally what I try to do at seven o'clock, about an hour and a half. So, um, we'll re-adjourn at uh, seven ten. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.